cannot explain how excited I am. This man played in the league 13 years, was a dunk contest champion multiple times. Also played for the Phoenix Suns. We went to the conference finals. A good friend, a good teammate, and a damn good player. His name is Jason Richardson. Jay Rich, what's up, man? What's going on? Thanks for having me here. Man, I'm so excited. He really has been talking about this all week. This is It's Friday now? No, it's Thursday? I don't know what day Time doesn't is. exist in Vegas, but Jason, Amin keeps being like, Jay Rich, can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Because they, they give me the, the guest list every day. They're like, okay, we got so-and-so coming and so-and-so. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, it's people I know or, you know, or know of. Yeah. But... What is it? Oh, Jay Rich coming back? Oh, man. <laughs> it's reminiscent time. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. Definitely had some good years there in Phoenix. Uh, all those years we were there, man. Uh, the talks we had in the yeah. hallways and continue to have those talks every time we run into each other. Yeah. I was, I was actually telling the story before I knew you were going to be a guest. I was telling the story of when we played Portland and they beat us in that first game. Yeah. And then we had to switch all the matchups. So we put Grant Hill on Andre Miller. Yeah. We put Steve Nash on on uh, Batum. Batum, yeah. And then we went up to Portland, and you had what, 30, 37, was 37, it? yeah. 37 up yeah. there in Portland, and we're like, it's a wrap here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to make that change. It was a different uh, lineup. Yeah. We came together, and it, the rest was, it was on after that. And then, which I want to ask you, because everyone knows you as a great dunker. Like, that, you know, I, obviously you had one of the most exciting dunk contests uh, of all time. I think the one that was in Atlanta, where you came out, you did the windmill with yeah. Dominique and all that. Yeah. But I feel like people don't respect that you were a great shooter as well. And th that Portland game is the one I always think about. It's like, you killed them from the outside pretty yeah. much. How do you feel about how you're remembered as a player? Um, of course, everybody's going to remember me from the dunk contest because that's where, you know, um, I got my name from. And we weren't winning many games to go to State. So <laughs> <laughs> we weren't Steph Curry and Clay Thomas or Draymond Green. So we were rarely on TV, if at all. <laughs> So um, a lot of people didn't realize, you know, how hard I worked on my game because I wasn't a shooter coming into the NBA. Right. Um, you know, in college I became a shooter because I worked on it. And once I got to the NBA, um, you know, the first couple of years between me and Gilbert Arenas, we were breaking guns or fighting over the guns, <laughs> the machine guns. Not, <laughs> not, not yeah, the yeah, guns. Gotta be clear, <laughs> it's a machine <laughs> at the practice facility that shoots the ball out. Okay, so, so, so Jason. Uh... <laughs> so, but we used to go in there and we used to like. <laughs> This hog this machine up yeah. because yeah. we was always trying to get shots up. So uh, I think that's what continues to make me become a better shooter. Is that something people don't realize, like, just the amount of work that players put in? I mean, I think fans sort of expect guys to just show up, especially from their rookie year, and be great. And I'm not sure they always understand the amount of work that actually goes into becoming better and then staying in the league for as long as you Absolutely. did. Absolutely. I think that's one of the parts that people don't realize. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, you're constantly in the gym. Yeah. And you're missing, you know, with the game schedule and practice schedule, then you're going to get extra work. You're missing plays. You're missing parent-teacher conferences. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you might be missing a funeral. <laughs> I mean, it's just, yeah. it just a lot of sacrifices you're making. But, um, you know, that work ethic, people are, they don't realize how hard that, you know, pros work. You mentioned Gilbert. I got to talk about this because we've talked about this in the past. Couple things. I want to talk about Gilbert mm -hmm. basketball-wise first, actually, yeah. and then we're going to talk about Gilbert, <laughs> the hilariousness. But I remember running into you years ago, and this was right around, I want to say, 2014, 2015, and we're just catching up. And then Jay looks at me and says, isn't it weird? All the things they said about Gilbert <laughs> was the wrong way to play point, and now all the point guards are playing like that. Yeah, Steph absolutely. and Damian Lillard, yeah, and, and you know, and and all you know, down the line, pretty much, the guys that play like Chris Paul are very limited. And the guys yeah. that are offense first point guards, that's kind of the way to go. And I just want to know, like, from your perspective, as you watch the game change, right, from where we were one of the few teams playing fast in yeah. Golden State, y'all were one of the few teams playing fast yeah. and shooting threes. Now. Everyone's doing it. So, like, how are you seeing the game now? Oh, man, it's it's wide open right now. I mean, it's positionless basketball. I think that's what makes everybody so dangerous. But um, I was just talking in the car about Gilbert, the same thing about him. He was literally the person that started what we're seeing right now with point right. guards, the combo guards. They're not really point guards, mm -hmm. but they're not really two guards. They, they're the basketball players that can score the basketball, and you need them on the floor. Right. And you see the Stephs and the Dames and all the other, you know, guards out there, Trey Young and those guys mm -hmm. like that. I think Gilbert was a trendsetter for that. I mean, he was just that unique in scoring, could shoot the ball really well, could pass it, right. dribble it, do all those things. But 
it just opens up the game so much that um, for me, I think the positive, you see him more scoring. Right. You see him positioning for basketball. You get guys like uh, Noel that he's able to play at, you know, five, eight, yep. they say he is. <laughs> um, and, you know, back then, if you put a five, eight guard on me, we're going yeah. to the post. <laughs> now, I'm going to get 30 in the post, but it's just a different game right now. But I think the, the, the con of that is we get away from the pure natural basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the defensive matchups, uh, the post play, uh, those type of things. I just I just love that style right. of basketball. Are there guys right now who you think are doing that style of basketball really well or you see the, the older vestiges of the game in them? Yeah, some of those guys are still doing it. And, and for me, you know, my last year in the league was, you know, 2015 with the – uh, the process in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. Did you I, trust it? I trust the process. I trust Sam. I, Sam is a great mind. If you really talk to Sam, he's a little quirky, but he's a great guy. You got to understand where he come from. But I didn't understand why we took him out the part of the game that really was, it's a beautiful part because it's so tough, which is the yeah. mid-range. Yeah. Right. And, but for me, if you look at the greatest scorers in the NBA right now, those guys still have mid-range yep. games. Yeah. And those guys, you can't stop. You can't stop them from getting to the rim. And if you stop them from getting to the rim, they got a mid-range. Yep. Yeah. If you play off them, they go shoot a three in your face. Yeah. And those guys are, we're talking about Devin Booker's, Kevin Durant, mm -hmm. Steph. Even though Steph shoot a lot of threes, Steph is one of the greatest finishers in NBA history almost. Right. Yeah. The way he's finishing, but it's just so, the game, the three-pointer has almost become like a dunk now. <laughs> Everybody's excited about a three-point, and then yeah, they don't care about a dunk unless you dunk on somebody. <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great take. I love that. <laughs> Jay, uh, okay, so that's the that's the basketball series. <laughs> oh, <one. man. laughs> Gilbert, you and Gilbert were rookies at the same yeah, time, yeah. right? And you were on a national champion team in Mich at Michigan State. Yeah. He was coming out of an Arizona program that was also really strong. You get to the league, and in the NBA, hazing comes in a lot <laughs> of different flavors. Like, some people go really hard. Some people are just like, hey, just get yeah. some donuts or yeah. something like that. What happened when they try to haze Gilbert? <laughs> it, it's, Gilbert is the pettiest person I know, first of all. And when you do something to Gilbert, he's going to come by like, okay, uh, I knocked down your cup of coffee. Well, Gilbert's going to come down and burn your house down. That's just, <laughs> that's just how Gilbert is. I, I learned early on, if you do what they say, they'll leave you alone. Right. But Gilbert just never, oh, no. just being Gilbert, he just <laughs> never just was cool about it. He always thought, you know, it was something that they were picking on him. But he just kept on messing with him. And so Gilbert was like, man, I'm a second round pick. I can't afford to get donuts every day. And so he's like, I'm done doing this. And so one day I'm coming to shoot around. They literally stopped me and Troy Murphy from having to buy donuts. It was Gilbert's job to buy donuts for the rest of the season. So he buy these Krispy Kreme donuts and I go to get one. He said, Jason. Mm -mm. <laughs> I said, what, man, I'm getting a donut. He said, I licked on every oh, last one of them. No. <laughs> he licked on every one of those donuts. Did he ever tell them? Or <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you got it, right? And After they, they eat them? Oh, they, they went on them. Oh, yeah. man, it was it was some bad things that happened to Gilbert that day. But <laughs> it was just the fact that, like I said, it's Gilbert Arenas. If you go do something to him, it's going to do it 10 times worse to you. I knew about it, but I didn't realize, like, how close that bond was as far as, like, big brother, little brother, showing them the ropes and stuff like that. What was it about, first of all, what was it about Jared that you said, I'm going to take you under my wing? Well, for the first thing is with Jared, um, he's a hard worker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it was almost kind of I saw myself in him. You know, uh, nobody really gave him a chance. Not really athletic. Right. Uh, you can't really get past I thought anybody. You, said you, you saw yourself in a hole. <laughs> you know, but just like it was the hard work yeah, part. Yeah, the there hard work yeah. part. And he made himself into an NBA player. Absolutely. And the hard work he put in and, and the things he's done, he was a great teammate. Yeah. I mean, he made everybody laugh, great locker room guy. So it was like automatically we just got this bond. And it was it was something that I was envisioning for myself when I was that young. Right. Until maybe my third year when Avery Johnson came along, Calvert Chaney came along, mm -hmm. Cliff Robinson came along. Those guys showed me, Derek Fisher was another one, how to be a vet. Right. And I was like, man, I gotta get that opportunity. I'm going to do that to a young guy. Because right. those guys took me under their wing, and they showed me how to be a, a veteran, yeah. how to be an NBA pro, how to last in this league for many years like I did. So it was like me, you know, after those guys took my hand, I took somebody else's right. hand. And that's how, you know, the NBA was with, you know, guys getting really close to those rookies and guiding them through to help them have careers. What did they teach you? Like, what was the thing to be a vet? Or what, if you could give a rookie one piece of advice, is there, like, what's the first thing you say? Man, shoot, it's a lot of things to say because it's, it's so many things that, you know, each vet taught me different things. So, like, for instance, Calvert Chaney, 
how to be a gentleman. I mean, Cal was one of the greatest teammates I, I ever had. Yeah. He just, the way he carried himself, he did it as a professional way. Uh, the same thing with Derek Fisher, hard work. I mean, Derek was in the gym, like, lifting weights every day. And that's why he looked like a big muscle. <laughs> he, he was just out there lifting weights every day. So it showed me how hard he worked. And then, not only that, he played with Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm picking his brain every day. I know I couldn't get at Kobe level, but tell me. What, what do I need to do? And he was telling me these different things Kobe was doing. I was like, yeah, I can't do that, but it's a great story. I'm going to try to do that. Um, Cliff Robinson, uh, just being tough on the floor. Just yeah. showing up and having your teammates back every day, day in and day out. And then Avery Johnson, it was it was more on a spiritual spiritual level. You know, you know, having your relationship with, you know, God and mm -hmm. you know, your family, how to be a family man. Yeah. Uh, that was that was really big for me to see him, you know, married to his wife for all these years, the way he treated his wife, the way he raised his kids. That was huge for me. Mm. All right, let's take a quick break here, Jay Rich. The stories are not stopping. They're great stories. It's great memories. I want to keep going. So Absolutely. let's take a little break. We'll come back with more Jay Rich right here on Oddball. Welcome back to Oddball, Charlotte Wilder, Amino Hassan. We're still here with Jason Richardson. We still got a lot more stories to go. You're a Michigan State alum. <laughs> Uh, another famous Golden State Warriors, a Michigan State alum, also wore number or wears, I should say, number 23 yep. for them, Draymond Green. Y'all are both from Saginaw, Saginaw right? Yep. So, did you have, like, what was your relationship like with Draymond before coming to the league and then since he's been uh, in the league? Well, it was, it was kind of, we kind of a big age difference. Yeah. But I'm from a city where it's 30,000 people, so everybody knew wow. everybody. So right. my, my mom knew his mom, knew his family. I mean, everybody knew each other, but it was at a stage where he was. Coming into college, and I was in the beginning of my my career, like uh, maybe four or five years yeah. into my career. So I wasn't coming home as much as I was those first three years. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't really have a super, super close relationship, but we're sagging off. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to stick together. So, you know, once he went to Michigan State, we got a bond. We started, you know, work out every time I come around. Uh, you know, he, he comes to, you know, somewhere. We would meet up and have dinner and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's still, we had that closeness with each other because we're from the small city and everybody support each other. What's your most intense Tom Izzo story? Oh, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this one ties into, um, you know, us, him being intense and us having the greatest practice I've ever been a part of. So um, my freshman year, we were, I think we was plus 17 in rebounding. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was huge for us. Yeah. He's, he's big about rebounding. We play Iowa. And I think we get all rebounded by five. And he just, he's lighting us up, lighting us up, lighting us up. And we're like, man, what's going to happen in the next practice? He's lighting us up right now. I can't wait to see what happened in the practice. So we all get in the locker room. As soon as we walk in the locker room for the next day for practice, it's shoulder pads and helmets in the locker room. I said, no. I knew it, man. I knew it. They just play football Are out there. Are you serious? Man. I'm dead serious. <laughs> and when I'm telling you, he said, we're going to see who wants to hit somebody and who wanted to be a man today. And we practiced the whole practice with helmets and shoulder pads. And let me tell you, it was the greatest practice I've ever been a part of. Because you could tell which guys wanted to get hit and who didn't. And we had, if we had 12 guys, we had 11 guys that wanted to hit. So it was just constant action. And we never lost the rebound battle in the two years I was there after that. Charlotte, I, I, when I tell you, that's what we always talk about. Guys coming to Michigan State, well, he's a football player just, cause, just because right, they played right. at Michigan State. Yep. I was just insane. I didn't know y'all actually suiting up out yeah. there, man. So we had this drill. It's called a war drill. Um, the war drill? War drill. Okay. And so it's anything goes. You got to get the <laughs> rebound. It's five on five. Five guys outside, five guys inside. They throw the ball at the rim. You got to box out first, but anything goes to get that rebound. It can go out of bounds. It can go down the stairs. You are getting you that get rebound. Ball, yeah. yeah. And don't let it be the offensive rebound. You get the offensive rebound, yeah. oh, you go stay on defense for a minute. You go stay there. Wow. <laughs> but it's just, we'll do that for 30, 45 minutes of practice. What are your memories of Matt Ishbia being on the team? One of my teammates that I, I always remember and one of the teammates I hate. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt, I know Matt since high school. We, we go way back, yeah. you know, yeah. since high school. And Matt was on the scout team. Right. So Matt could be Michael Red who was a shooter at Ohio, Ohio State. State. He yep. could be Joe Crispin, who was a shooter at Penn State. He could be Kirk Penny, who was a shooter at Wisconsin. And he could do whatever he wants. So he had the whole scout team make up plays, and he's running off eight screens to get a shot off and getting us yelled at. 
So, but it was fun though, man. I, I remember that. I'd be like, man, man, chill out, man. You ain't getting us in trouble. No, 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 no. Watch this next play I got for you. And he used to, and, and the thing about Matt, he wasn't a scrub. Matt could actually play basketball. Right. Okay. He was good. Yeah. He was good at high school and he played, you know, at Michigan State. We just had a lot of players, but right. he could really play basketball. And so with his little buddies just running around these screens and you had these big old guys setting screens for him, he's open, he's knocking it down. That's not something I think most people think about. You playing with someone on a team. One day this guy's going to own a team. Never. Yeah. That, never. That's a wild never. kind of leap, Would you right? have believed it if someone had told you no. that? No. Matt, it's real. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. In the NBA, there's three ways to do it, anything. There's yep. a wrong way to do it. Mm -hmm. There's a right way to do it. And then there's the, the best way to do it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, the example I use always is floppy, right? Yeah. Someone sets it down screen, you start under the basket, you come over, over right. If you want to do it wrong, you come off that screen wide, right? You got a yeah. lot of space between you and the yeah. screener. If you want to do it correctly, you come shoulder to shoulder. Right. But then I said, then you want to do it like an elite level. I said, Jay Rich would do this. He would like start and then he would look and he'd like, yo, I mean, what's going on? And then, <laughs> <laughs> there was so much more than yeah. just the act of going, you know, shoulder to shoulder on the screen. Yeah. It was all this misdirection and all that all right. stuff. Where do you pick up on that stuff? Is that something that you were coach? Is that something that you pick up because it happened to you on, as a defender? Absolutely. <laughs> it happens to me all the time. So, I mean, my era, I think, and I'm a little biased, but I feel like I lived in the greatest two-guard era. Right. <laughs> I mean, you had Kobe. You had T -Mac. T -Mac, yeah. T-Mac. T-Mac, Ray Allen, uh, Ginobili, yep. uh, Paul Pierce plays Brand, two-guard. Brandon Roy. Brandon Roy. So, and then you're playing against guys that were like, for me, I was an offensive guy. I'm match up against Doug Christie, Bruce Bourne. Right, right. And so you start picking up little tricks on offense and defense. I remember for Bruce Bourne, every time I came up with a floppy screen, he yeah. would grab my wrist. So as soon as I go, I had to stay with him. He let go, and he looked at the ref like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Guess what I started doing? Yeah. I'm not going to try. Okay, Trey, team out here, take this little grab real quick. But it works. But you find those little things. Like, if I'm coming off a screen as a defender, and I seen the guy coming shoulder to shoulder, I push him on his, his hip. Right. So now he, has to, he's, he can't get close to that. Charlie, you'd yes. agree, he's a really nice guy, right? You yeah, lovely. A, this right? has been a delight. Right? When I tell you, man, like, <laughs> him, the, Grant Hill comes across as a very nice yeah. man, right? Yeah. These guys, man, whenever I was running the scoreboard uh -huh. during the practice, yeah. don't believe this, man. They become liars. The meanest people <laughs> talking about that. You, you missed a point. You're like, no, I didn't. Like, And y'all happy believing in Downton and stuff. When that happens, is that, are y'all... We, I never understood totally, like, are, were they messing with me trying to see if you could get an extra point out of it? Or was you just literally so crazy competitive in that moment in a random drill that, like, you going to get whatever advantage you could? It was crazy competitive. Yeah, I think that's what I felt. Myself man. and Grant, we're honest guys. It just, we wanted to win. Yeah. And if we feel like we got cheated on a point, we want our point. Right. And that's just how, you know, that's why that team was so good. We were so competitive in practice. We didn't let anybody slide in those practices. It was just constant competitiveness. The chemistry was incredible, down to the, the family room. Yeah. When I tell you, like, it was the families that was hanging out together yeah. outside of us. Yep. So my cousin Proof was hanging yep. out with uh, Brian, yep. who was hanging out with Jeremy and yep. AJ, who was yep. Jared Dudley's yeah. friends and stuff. And it was like, it became this whole thing. Yeah. And I didn't realize that that wasn't normal. Yeah. At the time, we were just like, hey, man, yeah. it's all good. Yeah. I was going to say, as someone fr outside of the NBA world, how common is that? Never. It's not. Really? That's the only team. Uh, no, that was the only team where you had the players got along uh -huh. and the families got along. And that's a big one. That was a big one. And the crazy part about it, we lose to the Lakers in uh, game six. Mm -hmm. And I think the majority of the team stayed around and hung out with each other for like four weeks mm -hmm. after no the way. season. Like. Our, my family, Grand Hills family, Dudley, I think, was there, mm -hmm. and the owner. We all went to a water park and stayed a weekend <laughs> at a water park and hung out as a family. That's just how close that team was. That's it, dedication. It, Four yeah. weeks is a long time. It is a long time, but we didn't want the season to end. It was it hurt us because yeah. it was such a special season for us. Um, you know, just the guys sacrificing. Uh, I remember we playing San Antonio, mm -hmm. and Gordon Dragic go crazy yep. in the fourth quarter. Yeah, 23 points. 23 in the points. And Alvin comes, Alvin Gentry comes to the bench and asking me, Steve, Grant, and Amari, hey, you guys want to go in? He was like, no. They just kept playing. We played, they put the bench in with like two minutes to go in the, the third. third. Yeah. And then we, they never subbed back. Never subbed back. Never we never got back in the game. Yep. We ended up sweeping in San Antonio. 
But that was just how good that team yeah. was and how close it was that nobody cared about scoring. We just wanted to win. Right. And like for us to lose that, like I said, against Kobe, which was on the, he was on a mission. Um, we just didn't want the season to end. It was very special. We kind of yeah. knew that was the end of it. Yeah. Because Amari, they, we knew Amari. Free, Amari is a free, free agent. agent. Right. Yeah. So we, we kind of didn't want that season to go. Yeah. And then, again, I remember seeing you two years later. I think at, by that time you were in Philly. Yeah. And and we had that talk. We were like, man, we, we didn't know how good, good we it had. Good it was. Nope. Like, yeah. it, that was really, that's basketball heaven. And I know yeah. fans always think, oh, y'all didn't win a championship, so... What? Who cares? Or whatever. It couldn't have been that good. But when you find that level of everybody on the same page, absolutely, man, there's it's nothing special. like it. There's nothing like it. This is why, man. You're gonna be my brother forever. Ab I appreciate you, man. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure spending our time with you. When are we going to Mars? <laughs>